Hello and welcome to episode 64 in the Datapack tutorial series for version 1.21. We're going to be looping through an array. We're going to loop through backwards and we're going to loop through forwards. Uh, the reason why we're having a look at this is because we're going to use it for the multiple set homes, which we'll be doing soon. So probably easiest to give you uh, an example. It's not a very long video, so if we get on and just do it, if you want, you can skip to the end to see what it's doing. Okay, let's go to VS Code. And let's make some files and folders or folders and files inside function or my namespace function. I'm going to create a new folder just to keep my functions tidy. I'm going to call it loops and we'll have a new file and we'll have a loop loop backwards. Uh, let's uh, make sure we spell that correctly. <laughs> Two spelling mistakes in, in one word. Wonderful. Off to a good start. Okay, let's loop backwards. Let's not press F2. I'm going to copy and paste that and rename that one to loop backwards in it. Okay, one to initialize it, one to do the loop. And I'm going to get loop backwards in it. And I'm going to control copy that and paste it and rename it to loop forwards in it and I'm going to copy and paste that one and rename it to loop forwards macro. Okay and we're going to use the load function. We're not going to use the tick so don't worry about the tick. Right let's do load. Uh, we'll set up a, a an array we can use for testing so we'll do data modify storage ID data um, array set value and we'll set that value we'll have entry one copy that boink paste it paste it with commas in between entry two entry three and what we want to do is we want to display what's inside the array so we're going to do forwards so we get the result one two three and we're going to do backwards so we get the result three two one right load is done bye bye load right which is easiest probably loop backwards is probably the easiest one so let's start with that one and then in here we'll clear storage clear temp storage we will copy data We'll copy the array to temp storage and we will run loop. Okay, let's clear the temporary storage data. Remove from storage ID data temporary. That'll do. Now we'll copy the array into there. Data modify storage id data temporary set from storage id data array okay we've copied our array in there and we will function loop backwards yep with storage id data save that Okay, now let's go into loop backwards. Oh, that should be that should be in loop backwards in it. There we go. Loop backwards in it. That one is in. Keep that in mind, silly me. Okay, let's go to loop backwards. In fact, let's put that after that one, just so this one comes first. And then it does this one. Okay, so we'll display the entry. Then we will remove the entry. Well, we'll say remove the last entry, display the last entry, and run again if still entries. Okay, display the last entry. Tell raw at s, open and close. Have some of our uh, speech marks, speech marks, colon, speech marks, speech marks. We're going to have 
storage from ID data. Why are you unhappy there? Tell raw at s. Maybe it's because I haven't filled in this bit here with nbt. There we go. That's what it was. Temporary minus one dot entry. Now we're going to remove the last entry. Data remove. It's okay to remove it because remember we're removing it from temporary. We made a copy of the original. Storage id data temporary minus one and we'll run again if there are still entries execute if data storage id data temporary last one in the list run function loop backwards with storage id data save okay Let's have a test of that. Uh, five. That button there, if I do press it, is just running the reload command. Okay, let's check our data. Data get from storage. Nice. Data get from storage. ID data. Oh, we've got a lot of stuff in there from looks like from other tests. Let's do a data remove storage id data what we got all oh, players look you can see i've been playing around with the set home let's get rid of that okay id data just has our array in it as expected cool function loop backwards in it three two one there we go we've gone through the array and we've gone backwards so we've gone three two one cool Okay, loop forwards. A little bit more confusing. Gal uh helped me out with this one. Well, he sent it to me, actually, as part of uh, another data pack. And then the wicked Gal Sergi set it as homework for me. He said, I'll let you work out why it works. Took me a while and a bit of head scratching, but I got there in the end. Right, loop forwards in it. So we'll do the same again. Clear, temp. Uh, copy data run macro um, I think we can probably copy the loop backwards in it let's go to loop backwards in it clear temp I think both of these are going to be the same actually so we're just going to copy that all we're doing there is again clearing the temporary and making ourselves a temporary copy so it doesn't matter if we delete stuff and now we'll run the macro which we will do function Loop forwards macro with storage ID data temporary minus one. We are sending minus one. So we know in there we've got access to the entry. Let's save that. Loop forwards macro. This it just it seems strange to me. This does, but we'll until you understand it. Remove the last entry. Then we will run again if more entries and then we will display the entry okay data remove from storage id data temporary minus one execute if data storage id data temporary minus one run function loop forwards macro with storage id data temporary minus one display the entry tell raw at s text and the text we want to display is the entry so we'll put that in here as the macro entry say you are using data okay let's give it a test reload 
function, loop forwards in it. And now we've got one, two, three. Okay, how is this working? So loop forwards in it, we've saved the data into a temporary array, so we can pretty much ignore that now. And we're gonna send the last entry in the temporary array. And then the first thing we're gonna do is delete the last entry in the temporary array. And then we're gonna look for another entry. And then we're gonna delete that entry and look for another entry because we've got three and then we'll delete that one. And then it will come back down and say, there's no more. And then it will display the entry. So how is this working? I think maybe if I, let's write, let's write some pretend code. So what we're doing, we have three, we have three loops because we've got three entries. So it's looping three times. So let's say loop one. And that is being called with entry number three. And what's entry number three? Let's look at load one, two, three. Okay, so it's being called with entry number three. So, and then it's gonna come down here. It's gonna delete that entry. And then it's gonna look for more entries and it'll say, oh, well, I'm gonna loop then. So we'll go into loop two. And that is being called with entry number two. Copy. Entry number two. And then that's going to go down. There's still one more left. So it's going to delete that one. And it's going to go, there's another one. So we'll call this one loop number three. And that's being called with entry one. Okay. So we're calling. In loop one, we're calling with entry three. We come in, we delete entry three, but don't worry, the loop has still remembered. And that's fine. So then it goes down here and it goes, oh, well, there's still more information. Let's call it again with entry two. So it's calling with entry two and then it's coming down and it's going, there's still another entry. Let's loop again with entry one. And it's looping with entry one. Now, entry one is the last entry. So it's coming down here and it's saying, ah, no more. So it's checking the loop, checking, check loop, no more entries. So it continues on. It goes down and it displays, display, display entry one. And then it goes back to the previous loop before it. So let's tap that in line there, and then it goes back to the previous loop before it. First, we'll end. I am having trouble typing today. We'll end loop three. And then it's back to called with entry two. And called with entry two now continues and goes down to here and displays. So call, we'll do these two, copy. Paste them in there. Let's get rid of a all these spaces and line it up. Entry two. And then loop number two will end. End loop two. And now loop two is ended and it goes back to loop one. Loop one comes down to here. And copy, let's put that down there. and displays entry one, end loop one. So that's what happened. I suppose it's not really checking there. Let's move them out. So loop one gets called with entry three. Remo it removes entry three and then it goes here and it calls loop two with entry two. It removes loop two, goes to here. It calls loop three with entry one. Now the entry one goes, there's no more entities left. I will display my entry. Then loop three ends and it drops back to loop two, who goes, oh, well, there's no more entries. I'll display my entry. And then loop two ends. And then it drops back to loop one. And loop one says, and now I'll display mine. So we've reversed the order because we add them in the reverse order. 
and then the loops resolve back in the reverse order. So that's how that's working. So we have our, we can loop forwards, one, two, three, or we can loop backwards, three, two, one. There we go. So we're going to be using that in the set homes. That's it for today. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.